we're talking about a movie that's creating a lot of buzz at the Cannes Film Festival, Rafiki is significant for a number of reasons. It's the first Kenyan film to ever compete here. It's a same-sex romance, a rare subject in African art because intolerance for homosexuality is strong on the continent. And just weeks before it was due to premiere, it was banned in its home country. Let's go meet the director, Wanuri Kayu. Winery, congratulations on your film. Thank you, it's such an honour to be here. You've made history because you're the first Kenyan director to compete at the Cannes Film Festival. But it is bittersweet because the film has been banned at home. And there are two other directors who haven't been able to come um, to the festival. They've been prevented by their home countries, and Jaffa Panahi and Kirill Serebrenikov. Are you taking a risk by being here? I don't think I'm taking a risk because what we really wanted to do was to celebrate the film, and this is the best place to celebrate the film. And while the film was banned, there's been... It's been relatively quiet, and more than anything, we've had an overwhelming amount of support from the cast and the crew and general Kenyans who are really excited about the film coming to Cannes. So that's what we're bringing forth. We're bringing forth the excitement of the people who are behind us and kind of just, like, not paying attention to those who are not. Can you explain a bit about why it's been banned, people watching? So the Kenya Film Classification Board restricted the film, meaning that they're... They, we are not allowed to distribute, exhibit, broadcast, or possess the film in Kenya, within the Republic of Kenya. And they said that they did that because they feel that it promotes homosexuality. Doesn't she just look like a proper woman? Look at you. You're nothing. So do you face consequences at home for making a film about homosexuality? There have been threats of arrest, um, but we'll see what happens, um, because we truly believe that we have a strong constitution that allows us the freedom of expression. And although our constitution is very, very young, it's only eight years old, we do have rights to express ourselves and we fully, fully believe in our constitutional rights as artists. Now, Rufiki is um, based on the award-winning uh, short story, Jambola Tree. It sees two lovers beaten by their community, um, which turns against them. Why did you want to tell this story? I really wanted to tell a love story first and foremost. There are not enough love stories coming out of Africa. So it was really important for us to be able to tell a really tender, soft, innocent, kind of naive love story about these girls. And despite all the difficulties they go through in the film, I feel like there's such love and such tenderness between the two main characters. Then that's what we wanted to glorify. That's what we wanted to put forth. That's what we really wanted to celebrate, the idea of young love. Just a typical Kenyan girl. And the authorities, I don't want to give the ending away, but the authorities in Kenya wanted you to change the ending to make the characters more remorseful. Yeah. How positive do you feel about um, the future for gay rights in Kenya? I feel like there's a future for gay rights in Kenya in time, and we're working towards it. Right now, there's a court case about decriminalizing homosexuality that's going on in Kenya. And we believe that once we begin to live the spirit of our national anthem, which says peace, love, and unity, once we begin to really, really understand the, the, the meaning behind the words and the weight behind those words, then I think that we will be living a more African lifestyle, a more um, Kenyan that would be in keeping with the national norms and values. You studied in the United States. I did. And you could have stayed there to make films, but you chose to go back home to Kenya, um, where it's more difficult. Tell us about that choice. 
I'm inspired by my country. I'm inspired by the people at home. I'm inspired by the places, the smells, the sounds, the tastes of Kenya, and actually of Africa, really. And that's the place that I mostly want to tell stories about. That doesn't mean I don't want to tell uh, stories or make films in other places in the world. I'm just inspired most by the African continent. When I started to write my own science fiction and fantasy, I was surprised that it was considered un-African. So naturally, I asked, what is African? And this is what I know so far. Africa is important. Africa is the future. It is, though. And Africa is a serious place where only serious things happen. And you've done a lot of firsts for Kenya. I mean, your short film, Pumzi, said to be Kenya's first science fiction film. <laughs> um, but you've talked also about when you made that, people said it was an African. Yeah. Why is it an African? And what was your reaction to that? I think that we've, it's, it's kind of curious because we're trying to figure out what the definition of African and un-African is. It's, very, it's not defined by us because we're very clear about how we live and how proud we are of the work that we celebrate. And we are African, so anything that comes from us has to be African. There's no other way about it. It might not be done often, and sometimes it's not accepted, but it doesn't make it any less African. And those are the challenges, or those are the things that we're challenging, the ideas and the concepts around definition of identity. I found the perfect soul sample and planted the mighty seed. It's growing. The one you sent. The box with no delivery note. I didn't send anything. Reported to security and move on. You're a co-founder of a media company called Afro Bubblegum. Um, it focuses on things that we might not expect, as you say, that against the stereotypes of African art. And tell us about it. So Afro Bubblegum is more than just a media company. Right now, it's even a genre. People are describing their work as Afro Bubblegum art if it is joyous or if it is fun or if it is fr frivolous. Artists, whether in different forms, are beginning to say, my work is Afro Bubblegum work. And we're so glad, we're so proud that we, we launched this word into existence and people are claiming ownership of it. So is that the future of African film? I think the future of Africa is joyous, and I think the future of Africa is hopeful. So the future of Africa is definitely Afro bubblegum. Renari, like you're, the, you're making history here at the festival. What's it like? How are you feeling being here? I'm so, so excited and incredibly nervous at the same time. It's a bag of mixed emotions, but what, we, what has been kind of sustaining us, the images that has been sustaining us, is this image of young African women walking the red carpet, young African women presenting their work and finding our space here, because we believe we have a space here. Good luck, I wish Thank you the best you. of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.